I saw this and it's giving me the throwback feels, right? You remember when it became during the summer of love? You remember the summer of love? You know what I'm talking about? Well, all of the mostly peaceful protests, mostly fire, fiery, but mostly peaceful protests happened all around the country. And people uh, ended up, uh, I don't know, burning down businesses and entire cities. You remember all of that. And there was a problem uh, happening all across the country where you had looting. But people thought it was basically open season and they could just go take whatever they wanted out of any business. And you had people try to justify that by saying, oh, well, they have insurance. And you remember even people got mad at me. When I just said a basic statement, and it's a statement that I stand by, and you should understand that because I am a libertarian, therefore I hold property, private property rights above all, starting with the fact that one owns themselves. Therefore, nobody has the right to aggress upon you. And I remember I would talk about these looting situation, and you had folks that were like, oh, you're talking about all this looting. You should be talking about it was the George Floyd situation, dead black person. Basically say, well, you 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 care more about private property than, you know, the lives of, of these people. It's like, let me tell you something. If you. If you come and try to steal from me. And my business. You value my property over your life. You've made that decision. I will oblige. And I will be in the right to do that. And by right, I mean, yeah, it's Texas, you know, you have more lax laws in that regard. Uh, but it didn't matter where you were from. If you decided to defend yourself and your property and another motherfucker got his ass Swiss cheesed, that's on him. Stop stealing from people. Stop. Like, it, it requires nothing of you to... Theft is... To me, one of the most egregious crimes that exist, and it's a pet peeve of mine that people will go out there and try to act as if it's nothing. They don't know the blood, the sweat, the tears that gets put into you even obtaining that private property. And they think that, well, because I'm mad at some, I don't know, police killing somebody, I think that I have the right to, I don't know, go steal from you. Like, what the f what kind of logic is that? But either way, the answer is, do I value my property over your life in the event that you are trying to steal from me? The answer is yes. Ten times out of ten, yes, I do value my property over you and your life in the event you're trying to steal from me. Yes, 100%. And you've made that decision as well. But... A congressman apparently said something that was so controversial that this person thought that, uh, I guess it's part of the Moms Demand Action crew. This is what, she, what the uh, this is Representative Tony Lavasco says: "Looters deserve to be shot, but not by government." That's a pretty basic term. Pretty basic. Concept that anybody that values liberty, yeah. If you if you are going and actively trying to steal from motherfuckers, yeah, you you probably deserve a bullet in your ass. I I don't see what the what the of all things politicians say. That's the least controversial part. Uh, and Laura says, "This is horrific and infuriating." St. Charles area representative Tony Lavasco is the original name on this atrocity. I'll give you one guess as to why he's so strongly opposed to saving red flag laws. And that's, of course, her posting that tweet like, dude, of all things, like what? What is the problem with this? Now, apparently this is uh, Tony Lavasco. What she's referring to is like was some guy named Mark M Maxwell posted something said in this letter 48 republicans of the uh, from the missouri state legislature urged senator roy blunt to not back the bipartisan uh, uh, gun safety measure they oppose red flag laws because domestic abusers would have to give up their guns 
uh, before their con- oh, that's bullshit. Uh, what he's basically saying is, you know, red flag laws are bad, which they are. They're some of the worst, uh, and as you advocate for more of those, you get more death. Um, I've covered. I remember years ago covering with Ann Arundel, some place out there uh, up east by I think Baltimore, if I'm not mistaken, where a man was uh, killed by a red flag law being enforced. So he didn't commit a crime. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't even have the intention. He didn't uh, have the knowing intention of it was just some family member didn't like the fact that he had a gun schnitz. And to me, uh, they should be liable for his murder because that's what it was. And a piece of shit cop should be in jail. But nothing happened, of course, to the cop because they're looking at it like, well, uh, we came to collect. He didn't want to give us the gun. He tried to defend himself from the aggressors, which the cops were the aggressors, and they killed his ass. That type of stuff would happen, of course, more lo- more often, and red flag laws are particularly egregious. And they like to think, well, it's just common sense. Uh, you know, if the only people that actually want to inflict harm upon folks would be the people that are going to be impacted by the red flag laws. And they know they actually, I guess they have a more utopian view of it, but they also, I don't think they're that stupid. They they want to pu- punish their ideological enemies. That's what they want to do. Red flag laws are particularly egregious. But this is not a controversial statement. Looters deserve, he said this in May of 2020, do, right in the smack dab during the sum of love. Said looters deserve to be shot, but not by the government. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not a... A offensive thing if actually we'd have more freedom uh more liberty if politicians actually uh, consistently had that approach fuck fuck the state like the problem here is and we covered stories in out there in like uh, uh what was it milwaukee and other places where they got like pawn shop owners where uh, it was a pawn, pawn shop owner that ended up killing a looter shooting a looter dead and they originally like arrested him for murder for defending his property. A known looter got his ass aired out and they're like, well, people try to look at it as if it's like, well, it doesn't equate the crime. And it's like, dude, I know you like to think people's stuff isn't important, but it is important. That's the livelihoods that you're messing with. Insurance isn't just like snap all your everything's paid for. That's not it works anyway. But nonetheless, nobody is under any requirement to assume like the great Rothbard did a, uh, I mean, uh, amazing uh, write up talking about this where you'd be basically stupid if you didn't assume that every invasion was a violent one. And I say this as someone's born and raised South Dallas, Texas. You damn right. I would assume that someone that's willing to break into my shit would possibly do something else. It ain't on me to figure it out whether you are or not. They, these weird old leftists like to act as if it's realistic for us to say, hey, Mr. Man, that has just broken into my business or my house. Do you plan on just walking out with the TV? Or do you plan on, I don't know, harming my wife? Harming me? Oh, you just plan to take the TV? Okay, I will take your word for it. What do you think this shit is? We got seconds, time's ticking. You break into my shit, depending on what's near me, maybe a SIG, maybe, maybe a rifle, maybe the shower gun. The shitty high point that's in the shout, maybe. Whatever's near me. And I'm airing your motherfucking ass out. And that's exactly what you deserve. It ain't on me to sit up and ask you if you only decide, or you just want to steal my iPad. Talking about it, it doesn't warrant death. That's a person that's never had to experience the trauma of having a shit broke into. Never, never have you experienced, you don't understand that traumatic experience. You don't know. So you think, and you don't have anything worth fucking stealing anyway. So you don't know. It would have been a whole a lot less looting. And the areas where it was more allowed, it didn't happen as much. What was that? What's that? The sheriff out of like Florida. He was like, if you decide to go loot. He, he, he flat out told TV, he was like, we're encouraging y'all 
to shoot their ass. If that approach was consistent, you bet your bottom dollar you'd have less people going around stealing from folks. But you have all these laws. I don't even know why you would open a business up in like California or somewhere like that. Well, they got laws baked in where basically a person can walk. For one, you can't do anything to them. You have uh, a duty to retreat laws that exist out there. I think Minnesota is another one that has them. Um, uh, duty to retreat law. Duty to retreat law basically means that you, before you can actually defend yourself, you have to run. And so if you defend yourself before running away or defend your property before running away and escaping out the window or something, then you're the criminal. I don't know why anybody would live in those areas and why people would open open businesses in those areas. But that type of stuff exists and basically it ties the hand behind the back of the business owners. Laws that say basically, well, it's not even a felony. Like it's not even a serious crime for you to walk out with X amount of dollars. As long as you don't hit this threshold, you're going to be all right. So you've incentivized crime. Whereas to the law, there should be no law against it. It should be defend your property how you see fit. If your motherfucker is knowingly aggressing upon you. And yes, stealing is an act of aggression. Do what you need to do. And you'd have a whole lot less of it. That's for sure. You just listened to a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash Young Ripper 59 and Odyssey.com slash at Young Ripper 59. Be sure to check out my website, EricDJuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.